There is a creature, alive today, who has survived decades without change, without reason, and without logic. It lives to joke. A mindless, laughing machine. I'm getting scared. I'm getting scared. Take me home. Coming up. Blue Sharks are known as the Wolves of the Sea. Captain Arc Gaetan from Blue Shark Charters has tons of experience wrestling these brutes into the boat. Bob teams up with comedian Jimmy Flynn for two days of shark fishing with Captain Art. They head out off the coast of Nova Scotia, and things start to get tense when Bob hooks into a 370-pound toothy monster. Oh, man, what a giant. <laughs> Here comes. Whoa. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh yeah. oh, yeah. All right. Look at that big laser. Yeah. Ah, dude. Oh, baby. That thing is a monster. <laughs> the Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I got one. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of things. Ow. Look at those teeth. Zoomy! <laughs> All right! Woo-hoo! Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, my God. Whoa! All right! Look at the size of this bit. Real Fishing is sponsored by Chevrolet, Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Hey, folks, that's what I call real fishing. Jimmy Flynn. Hey, Bobby. How are you, buddy? Good. How's it going? <laughs> good to see you. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, you're looking good, brother. Welcome to Nova Scotia. What a day we're going to have in the water. Look. Hey, it's nice and flat. Uh, well, comedian Jimmy Flynn's here to have some fun with us today. You can do a little shark fishing. Uh, what do you think? You think Art Gaetan's got to figure it out out there? Uh, he's, he's one of the... Probably the finest shark fisherman I've ever met. He's been at it for 30 years, so it's a real treat to go with a man of his caliber. Well, you dry, I mean, you get all slicked up for today. I did. I bought you a hat for Nova Scotia now, so put that right on the top of there. Oh, perfect. We're going shark fishing. Oh, perfect. All, all right. right there. <laughs> Boy, I sure hope it rains today because I got the right hat. What a big sight, Bobby. <laughs> Here we are two hours later at the honey hole. Jimmy was looking for the axe on the water, couldn't find it. <laughs> we started drifting on top of a hump in 500 feet of water. Art set up buckets of chum and we drifted into 600 feet, leaving a tasty trail of ground up macro and herring behind us to draw the sharks in. What we got here is called a Mako Magnus. I think the thing should be illegal. Uh oh. It's, it's very, very uh, effective in bringing fish to the boat. And what it does is it emulates bait fish in distress. And basically, all it is is an electronic device with a diaphragm on the bottom that chatters. Oh. And you'll hear it when I put it in water and I hook it up to this battery. Sounds like Junior Snore, listen. Talking something like I've never seen or used before. Big as Bob, right? Yeah. 300 pound test stainless steel aircraft cable, 13 on hook, nice and sharp. Oh man! Oh man! Oh, oh shit! Oh man! Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> You'd have to look a long time to find a pair of shoes like that. It's not our lobster's giving this. <laughs> I hope not. I was going to make a sandwich. <laughs> My favorite hobby is work. To watch you suckers work all day long. How did you get a chair over here? <laughs> the shark can detect one eye drop of blood in the Olympic sized swimming pool. That is one ugly shark. Yeah, we got a wee fella on here. Let's see what is going on. Yeah, that's a blue one, that's a little one, that's a very, very small one. Which is fine, it gives us something to work off. Yeah, but he has parents around, right? Yeah, we're looking for the granddad. So we fella? Okay. Alrighty. Okay. 
All ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, first Nova Scotia shark. There you go. And I, I'm robbing the cradle. Yeah. I got the wee fella. I'm bringing him in, Bob. All righty. Oh, so you're doing a little tag in here. Tag is in. Yep. What I'm doing here is I'm taking DNA samples for a student in Belfast, Ireland, who is doing uh, his thesis on the DNA of blue sharks. He emailed me up and he asked me if I'd be interested in, in conducting the uh, survey with him. And I said absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two little, two little hole punches. We're going to take this vial. We're going to turn that upside down. We're going to send that in. He's going to turn it up nice and tight. And now that's a sample that's going to be sent back this shark and we're going to record everything about the shark all right don't get alarmed by the blood it coagulates before your very eyes and the reason why that is is because when you put him back in the water if he still bleeds like we bled he now becomes part of the food chain I gotcha right so they coagulate very very quickly they heal quickly He's back in the water and he ain't bleeding no more all righty all right, now we're going to put this guy back, Top. So just watch around that there a little bit there. Okay. I'm just going to lay him in the water. Okay, can I let him go? Yep. You want to be very careful doing that? Because he's the one of the sea sharks. There he goes, there now. Look at that. All righty. The one of the sea sharks that actually can bite your tail. No kidding, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that now. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Nova Scotia shark fishing. Oh my god, you can see me arms off! Blue sharks are found in deep, temperate, and tropical waters. They are known to migrate long distances, which is why Arden has never caught a shark that he has tagged. They migrate in a clockwise pattern from North America to Europe and across to the Caribbean. They feed primarily on small fish and squid, but are known to take larger prey. Blue sharks can reach lengths of over 13 feet long and weigh over 500 pounds. The world record is 528 pounds. Most that we have out there are actually, um, they're about 9 inches long and 3 inches in diameter when they're sitting in their normal state. But then when we put them in a set mode, we fold them in two and we put a band over them to keep them closed. It keeps our line at the preset depth that we have selected. It's an indication of a strike when a shark hits, they snap open. There he is. Oh, you got it. Good boy yourself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, great. As a comedian and an athlete, honestly, how does it feel? <laughs> I think I got a telephone cable on here. <laughs> we hook bottom. Jim, are you hungry? Do you want a lobster? <laughs> you bugger. <laughs> There's a man that's getting whipped right oh. there. But I'll tell you what, it sh he shows fine form. Fine <laughs> form. I mean, I've never seen suspenders bent backwards that much before. Uh, yowie, 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 come on. I think he's got a poor beagle there. A oh, poor beagle? I think he wow. might have a poor beagle shark here. Get back. Dad, oh, oh look, at look at the teeth on that fish. <laughs> Woo, baby. Arrgh. Let's just have a look at this creature. <laughs> you just got, got a Martian here. <laughs> a Martian. <laughs> you sure you want to bring him home with you? <laughs> He's like a turtle. He hides, right? So what do we figure this thing is? 300 pounds? Is that the weirdest fish you've ever seen? It is. I've seen one years ago, Bob, about 8 feet long. They get 700, 800 now, pounds. Now, they call them a sunfish, an ocean sunfish, but what's the real uh, name for these? Mola Mola. Mola Mola. Mola Mola. I've never seen fishing like this in my life. Hey, don't need a fishing rod. <laughs> he just caught him with his hand. 
Boy, what a day out here. Hey, Jimmy, how's that stupid brother of yours doing anyway? He's getting in more trouble, Bob. I'm out of town. I tell you, you want, to, uh, you want to join a motorcycle gang. So the head of the motorcycle gang come out and said, what have you done? You know, it's really something in your life. He said, I saw a bunch of guys jump an old lady once you're trying to steal her purse, and I fought them off. He said, that's nothing. Well, my brother thought for a second, well, I was out shark fishing one time, he said, and I hooked a ten-foot shark, and I got him up against the side of the boat, and I bent down to get the hook, and he bit my arm off. Gosh, really? He said, I grabbed the arm out of his mouth, and I beat the shark to death with the arm, that's the fishing line, and sewed the arm back on. Guy said, that's fantastic. He said, you're in the gang. My brother said, great. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, because the second day of shark fishing is coming up next. <laughs> Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. There's no question in anyone's mind that fish have moods. The weather, time of day, and other factors affect their activity level. When actively feeding, they'll take food deliberately and swallow it down. Once full, they enter a neutral state. By using large bait or an aggressive approach, you can still trigger fish. Many of these aren't hungry and hit as a reflex action. It's a predatory response inherent in most species. Basically, it's the need to kill rather than the need to eat. Bass, trout, and even panfish exhibit this behavior. Toothy critters like walleye take it further, while musky and pike top the list. Northern pike are such notorious killers that many anglers refer to them as freshwater sharks. Even when full, with no intention to eat, they'll grab, mortally wound, then spit out anything that looks alive. Like a well-fed cat toying with a mouse, this hit and spit activity is common practice. And just like sharks in the ocean, what seems like waste is actually an easy meal for lesser standbys. The good news is this predatory behavior can be used to your advantage, but you have to be quick to set hook. Even when the fish are completely off, keep presenting them with a lifelike target. Eventually, you'll aggravate them into a built-in response they have no resistance to. Blue Shark Charters um, started up seven years ago. And when we initially started Blue Shark Charters, we started in a little 24-foot uh, Campion boat. Since then, we've moved up to the bigger boat, the 34-footer. A typical day out here on Blue Shark Charters leaves between 6 and 6.30 in the morning. We usually come out with 160 pounds of ground-up bait, which is mackerel and herring. We set up our slick and we drift, and uh, patience is the game when we fish these guys. To date, the largest shark that we've taken to the side of the boat was a shark estimated to be between 14 and 1600 pounds. The different types of shark that were out here predominantly are going to be the uh, blue shark, and they range anywhere from 40 pounds on up through uh, a little over 400 pounds. The other sharks that we get out here are the poor beetle shark. They're in the same family as the uh, great white. The other shark that we can get out here, of course, is the mako, the uh, short fin mako. Uh, he's a very, very uh, dangerous shark, and have been known to jump in the cockpit of boats and bite people's feet off. We've caught makos in the 800,000 pound, 600, 400 pound range, and the smallest mako that we caught out here so far was 165 pounds. Eastern Passage, Nova Scotia is on the southeast shore of Halifax Harbor. The small community is within driving distance to Halifax, but maintains a quaint eastern feel. There are many small shops and places to buy fresh lobster. The famous Lawrencetown Beach is nearby as well, where you can take a walk Go for a swim or surf with the locals. After our amazing first day of fishing, we spent the night at Wayne's World Lobster and Seafood. Then we were up early the next morning to get out and do some more shark hunting. Oh, you ever bite it? Well, here we are, day two out here off the coast of Nova Scotia, fishing for sharks. Shark, shark, shark. Three sharks. Weird tricky sharks. <laughs> they said they're weird. They're weird tricky sharks. Some of them had a bite. Hey, you got to your hands. I just gave you some in the Who invited him? <laughs> Good shot, didn't he? Come on! <laughs> yeah, life doesn't get much better, does it? Okay. 
Hold me here, Bob. We got sandwich. Give me a bite. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to eat. <laughs> oh. I mean, where else are you going to have a big old lobster, take the meat out, and make yourself a lobster submarine out here in the ocean, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it's the biggest one yet, Bobby. Let me know when you get it close. I'm just eating, okay? Okay. Just trying to have some lunch, you know. There's never a dull moment out here. Got to one, Bobby. Go to get it! Okay. <clears throat> I'm done having lunch, Jim. You can get them up now. Hi, Jimmy. Jim, I just said I'm done lunch. You can get them up to the surface now. <laughs> Look at that. This one's a nice colored one. It's a big shark. It is a yeah, big well, shark. Gotta bring that in now. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, Bobby. Oh, and your smorgasbord still set up here, Jim. Oh, look at that buffet and everything. Well, I appreciate them just giving us noodle time to have a rest of something to eat. Are we coming around? Oh, right. oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how come he's carrying most of it? <laughs> I mean, I got two fingers under this head. Does he know? Get my shirt dirty. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. Stay tuned to see if Bob can land the biggest fish of his life. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Hey, I just want to take a break from the fishing. I'm here with Robert Dupel from FNCC and BoaterExam.com. Robert, uh, thanks for talking with us. Let's talk about navigational aids. Sure. As you know, most boaters, Bob, really don't know about navigational aids. But when they see a buoy, all of a sudden there's a bit of panic there because they don't realize what they're for. So I've got this little trick that can help out, mm -hmm. the three R's, red, right, return. So we always know that we keep that red buoy on our right when water's returning or going upstream or when we're returning to the marina or returning back from sea. So think of those triple R's, red, on your right when you're returning home or to the marina and you'll always be safe. All right, thanks, Robert. Sure. Appreciate it. Bobby, see him? Yes. Did he just eat that? Oh my. oh my. Even his host fish weighs six pounds. Oh me, oh my. That is a jumbo. Oh, it's in his mouth. Okay. All right, I guess you want him to go away from the boat, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay, before we get a set on him. This is giant. He's going to hit here in a minute. I don't want him down there, though. Okay, hold on. There he is. Okay. He's going, going, down. Down. He's going away. There wow. you go. Oh my God. Okay, boys and girls. He's starting to move. See ya. There we go. Bobby! <laughs> what a fish! That fish got to be 15 feet long. I bet that's the biggest fish you ever had on your life, isn't it? It could be. We'll see. No, no, I saw him. This is the most exciting thing I think I've ever done fishing. Is that you right? See that fish come around you there. And I, you I think it is for me too. At least, at least from a saltwater perspective. I thought it was going to jump in the boat. He came right up and looked right at you. Oh. This is your Baba Zuni. <laughs> <laughs> you folks at home, this fish is on here. It's got to be 12 to 15 feet long, and he's that round. It's the biggest shark I've ever seen. I don't think we know he's hooked yet. I'm just going to work him back up in, okay? This is called working up. <laughs> Look at the two fins there. Look, there's five feet between them. Tell you what, though. It is definitely the most work I've done in a long, <laughs> long time. <laughs> yeah, talk to your wife. She'd agree with you. <laughs> Bobby, you're in for one hour. You rub down or anything? I am putting everything I've got into this thing in terms of just holding on to it and trying to get it at least close to the boat. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, baby, just come up a little bit. So once we bring this fish in the boat, 
It's important that nobody stay on this level of the deck. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't pull, don't pull. to measure them? Yeah, you do that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. 372.96 pounds. 373 pounds? Alrighty. Wow. Hey. The biggest fish. The biggest fish. that is. That's the biggest fish of your life. I have 300 pound black marlin, but that could have ate it. Water some champagne. <laughs> you buy it? I buy it. I buy it. <laughs> Oh, you know, I feel like doing a little dance now after that little fest. Take this rod, take this rod, take this rod, take this rod, take this rod. I don't know how to dance this way. This is called the shark stuff. On the way back in, we saw some basking sharks swimming right up at the surface. These massive sharks are the second largest fish in the world. But don't worry, they aren't dangerous. They feed on zooplankton and tiny fish that they filter out of the water. Shark fishing in Nova Scotia was an amazing adventure. We caught a ton of sharks and catching my biggest fish ever was a real thrill. Tune in next week for some more real fishing. Farewell to Nova Scotia, you sea bound toast. Let your mountain start and be righty. Oh, when I'm far away in Toronto again, Will you ever heave a sigh or a wish for me? All the sharks were biting in the east. Bob came down and caught 42. <laughs> well, he's going to come back again and catch one for me and you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs> yes, 